what's going on everybody thank you for checking out today's video and today i am very excited to do my very first pedal demo here on the channel which is something that i've wanted to do for quite some time now and today i'm going to be talking about the electro harmonics pitchfork pedal now, I've personally owned this pedal for about the past two to two and a half years, and I have to say I have really, really enjoyed playing with it on various occasions and have found it to be pretty useful in more than a couple of different situations. This thing currently runs for $188.40 US on Amazon at the time of shooting this video. But I've definitely found it to be a very sound investment and very much so a worthwhile addition into my signal chain. And as I alluded to earlier, this thing comes in handy when encountering quite a few different scenarios. So I will include a link below if you want to check one of these bad boys out. For those of you who may not know, the Pitchfork is at its core a pitch shifting pedal, which, as its name implies, takes the original signal from the instrument you're playing and shifts the pitch up or down to whatever intervals you have the pedal set to. And the design of the pedal makes it very, very simple to dial in a variety of different sounds, even without the use of an expression pedal. Although you definitely will have more manual control over the glissando rate or the rate of the amount of slide up or down from its original pitch with the expression pedal plugged in. I've always used the Moog EP3 expression pedal whenever I need one and at the time of shooting this, that particular expression pedal runs for $49 US, but there are a variety of different expression pedals the Pitchfork is compatible with, so I'll include links to all of those below as well. But again, even without the expression pedal, I definitely feel like this thing delivers some extremely desirable results. Now, the first thing I want to mention is that this pedal basically functions in two different modes, which are latch mode and momentary mode. When the latch button in the middle is pushed down and engaged, the effect will become active when the foot switch is tapped on and will remain active until the foot switch is tapped again to disengage, similar to how most pedals operate. However, when the latch button in the middle is raised and disengaged, the effect will become active when the foot switch is tapped on, but will return to unity as soon as the foot is lifted off of the switch. most basic and practical applications for this pedal is also one that I find to be probably the most useful application, and that's its ability to simply shift the overall tuning of the instrument without needing to physically retune. Need to tune down to play those heavier songs? Well, guess what? With the Pitchfork, you can do just that without ever having to touch a single tuning peg. And the best part is that there is little to no discernible coloring of tone, which can be shown in a simple demonstration when using the expression pedal. Here's the sound of my guitar without the Pitchfork activated. <laughs> Now I'm going to activate the pitch fork, but I'll leave my expression pedal completely unengaged so that the pitch isn't being shifted, but my signal is still running through the active effect. <laughs> And as you can see, if there is any difference at all in tone, it's not something that's particularly noticeable. And based on what I've seen from other demonstration videos, in this department, this seems to outperform its competitor, which would be the legendary Digitech Whammy pedal. Now both pedals are very similar in terms of functionality and what features they provide, but the Whammy pedal seemed to cut signal slightly more than the Pitchfork and seem to color the tone ever so slightly. However, even then, the coloring wasn't extremely noticeable and would likely be very inconsequential overall in either a live or studio setting. So the point is, I'm not here to discredit the Whammy pedal. As I said, it's a legendary pedal, and it has rightly earned its status as such. 
And the beauty of the Whammy pedal is that it already has the expression pedal controls built in. So there are no additional accessories required for you to get the full potential of the pedal. But personally, I was overall happier with the results I observed from the Pitchfork, and due to the fact that I already owned an expression pedal, it was definitely a more economically sound investment for me. But whatever pedal you end up determining is the best pitch shifter for you, for me, the ability to tune my instruments to play a wide variety of different types of songs is a feature that single-handedly made owning one of these pedals a must. <laughs> But if I want to transpose that same top string riff down to a lower and heavier key, I can do that. Let's say that I want to jam in a tuning that's more commonly used in modern metal. Well, I can do that easily by setting this thing to the appropriate interval, flipping the center switch into the down position, and making sure that the blend knob is turned 100% to the right. <laughs> One of the great things about the Pitchfork is the range of pitch intervals that it offers. You can adjust in intervals of minor second, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, minor seventh, up to the first octave, and then two octaves past that. Do you want to bend those pitches up high to two octaves and beyond like Tom Morello? Well, set the pitch interval to the second octave, flip the switch in the middle, into the up position and go. And, as mentioned earlier, you get even more of a range of manual control when you use it with the expression pedal. Now let's try the reverse. Do you need your pitch to dip dramatically and spring back up? Just flip the switch back into the down position and apply the same principle. You can also set the center switch to the dual position to get an interesting combination of intervals.
with all of those different pitches and combos available, it took absolutely no time at all for the doors to open and for my imagination and creativity to just kind of go wild. I recently actually just recorded a demo using this pedal for the first time in a recording setting, and I was extremely pleased with the results. I'll actually go ahead and play you guys a short clip of the demo real quick to give you a peek of what I've been working on, but I hope to have the full song up plus a couple of more that I've been working on very soon. That tune was a lot of fun to record, and I am definitely looking forward to seeing how many interesting scapes I can create from the blend of available options this pedal has to offer, and determining their potential applications for future projects. I know that if I did not own one of these already, I'd be very excited to receive one of these in my stocking this year. Again, if you'd be interested in picking one of these up, links for both the Electro Harmonics Pitchfork and the Digitech Whammy pedal can be found in the description below, as well as links to the various expression pedals available on the market. Full disclosure, if you do purchase something through one of those links, I will receive a small commission as an affiliate, which is at absolutely no additional cost to you, but it does help to support the channel so that I can continue to create awesome content here for you all. I want to thank everybody for watching today's video. Please be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed it, and consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on any of the music-related content we have coming up on the channel. I hope that everybody out there is doing well, and I'll see you all in the next video. Today's video has been brought to you by the 3 DOS Ghosts Gaming and Entertainment Organization. Please click down on the link below to check out and join our community discord.